600 pounds of Jimmy Changas, four pairs of assless chaps, 12 humiliating minutes on a casting couch, 117 script pages, 456 ad libs, what the shit? Two nerds, seven magical unicorns, three good balls, and a fourth that's broken. Did I leave the stove on? 42 rejection letters from Fox, one leaked video, and 783 million fans for your consideration. Fake laugh, hiding real pain. Deadpool. This is the emergency podcast system. This is not a test. Movies are bombing all over the country. They are posing as movies you already know. They may already be in your theaters, your neighbor's home, or even your own. Do not panic. Specialists have been dispatched. They will help you identify these pretenders and defend you against this invasion of the remake. Please stand by for further instructions. Welcome to the Evasion of the Remake podcast. I am your host, Jason Bishop, and with me, as always, are my co-hosts, Trish Coughlin. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. It's just just an honor to be here. You're not getting anything. <sighs> <laughs> Actually, maybe the winner for whoever gets the best <laughs> predictions will get a coupon for, like, KFC or something. Nice. Sam Stepanenko, everybody. Yeah, KFC, no. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. I'd give you a coupon to Sizzler, which would be really funny for Americans, but we don't have Sizzlers in Canada. No. Nope. The keg? <laughs> the keg? I can't afford to give you guys keg gift certificates. What are you talking about? We only need one. You're just giving it to the winner. Well, I'm going to win, so... <laughs> <laughs> I plan to. Today is our Oscar special. Last year we did this. Anybody remember what episode that was? We think I'd prepare oh, for that. Oh, it was that. halfway. It was about, uh, let's see, week 27, 28. Oh, that's a pretty good guess. Uh, I'm going to say 25. Episode 25. Oh, we did the Academy good, yeah. Award predictions for last year. And, of course, we are probably the least qualified people on the planet to do this for you, and which makes it far more fun. But we've yeah. done, especially Trish and I, actually all three of us, we've done a lot of Oscar parties and mm -hmm. made our predictions. And sometimes we've done really well never having watched the movies. So <laughs> I know Sam's seen quite a few of the movies. I've yeah. seen a different batch of different movies. I've seen a few. So we've all got different ones. And uh, if nothing else, we saw the trailers. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you just go by the trailers, you know what? Sometimes we do better knowing less. Yeah, so I don't know. This could be my worst year because I know yeah. quite a bit. Because last year, we didn't, I didn't even watch trailers. <laughs> yeah. Although going into this, I hadn't seen a single Best Picture nominee, and I've seen one now. Sam, you've seen... Seven this seven? year. Seven? Which is really unusual because usually I stay away from Oscar bait. But yeah. this year I, I, I just happen to have seen quite a few of them. And Trish? I've seen one of them. <laughs> You're like me. But on the upside, I've seen like four of the five best animated pictures, so yeah. it tells you where my interests lie. <laughs> I've seen most of the ones related to like the actors that weren't best picture, not the actual best picture films themselves, you know, because some of them are, are nominated for films that weren't up for best picture. So that's where yeah. I saw a lot of them. Yeah, this yeah. could be an interesting Oscars in general, I think. <laughs> It's it's an interesting spread of movie, movies. You know what? Before we go, I want to put down... I've only really got one drinking rule this year. We had a whole bunch of rules last year for, yeah. for your Oscar parties. I've only got one for you this year. It may kill you. <laughs> so drink responsibly. Yeah. Have, you know, cabs ready or... or Uber or Lyft. Uber or Lyft or, if nothing else, um, just camp at your friend's house. And, and to be fair, if it gets out of hand... Feel free to just abandon the game. Yeah, yes. My one rule is every time you hear a political statement referring to the Trump administration or saying his name, take a drink. That's it. That's the only one you have. Because that's the only one you need. Because I think you're going to get hammered this year. Celebrities do not like Trump. No. No. 
as a rule. There are, oh, well, there are a lot of people don't. I don't yeah. think they're the only ones. No, but they're, they're the ones who have a platform to say to say whatever yeah. they damn well please. Yeah. And hey, we get Meryl Streep round two. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why I think she might win. Sometimes I thought maybe she'll win just because they want her to give a speech. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, much like the Oscars, we're going to save the best ones for last. Remember, you got your sheets ready? We do. We do. All right. Can you, you'll, you'll hear the paper, paper crinkling and the smoke burning from my ears from thinking yeah. about all this stuff that I know nothing this about. Is, this yes. is the list. We've actually got physical lists here, people. Yeah, and you're you're watching it live, like you know how they count the votes, like in behind closed doors, and have them in briefcases. We're just sitting here with just paper. Yeah, <laughs> we're pretty know, open. People don't really understand how the Oscar voting works. I don't think, and it it tends to be like the union people, the Writers Guild, vote for the writing screenwriting award yeah. parts of the awards, and the technicians will vote for like editing and and some of those ones that they announce that don't make it to the show. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah they have a technical awards ceremony yeah. the day prior. Yeah, day which prior. I wish they would put on because I think that would be freaking fascinating. I would love to see some of these hard-working film crew guys walking up to stage in their jeans and t-shirts accepting awards. It'd be freaking awesome. Yeah, there's a guy Amazing. who's been one of those grunt guys. You know, I, I you know I know those guys work hard for what they do. So yeah, or the effects guys going like I I, I was I was in the editing room for like sixty hours. I don't remember that section of my life. Yeah, even, Thank you. <laughs> even as a short in film school, my editors were not drinking coffee. They were eating coffee grounds with a spoon to get through their editing. So I really respect editors. Yeah. And we're going to be coming up on that in this first part of the show. In fact, it's going to be our first one up entirely um, da, 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 da. for film editing. Achievements in film editing. <laughs> Arrival. Hacksaw Ridge, Hell or High Water, La La Land, and Moonlight. What the hell? We're not doing that every time. We can't I'll... do that every time. No, no. <laughs> no the show would be five hours. <laughs> but we could, we could swap off who's doing the announcing, yes. like who the nominees are. Yeah, let's do that. So, uh, for me, you know, I, I haven't seen any of these movies. But I think the odds-on favorite for the Oscars is La La Land. But I saw the trailer for it, and I don't like it. <laughs> it's too and, happy. And yeah. I can't deal with well, it. Well, it's not so much happy. It's just it doesn't seem as, as tight as I was thinking it was going to be. But Moonlight, on the other hand... <sighs> Looks amazing. They took something it another is. filmmaker did 15 years to shoot <laughs> with Boyhood and did it in two hours and one shoot. So I, I, I'm going to give that to Moonlight. They've managed to take a bunch of different actors and make them all look like it's this kid growing up and mm-hmm. in the hood and looks like a really great film. So I'm going with Moonlight. I've seen all of these except for La La Land, and I'm with you, not liking the way that movie looks. So, and I, But I really liked the way that Hell or High Water was put together. Okay. Really liked it. So I'm going with that. Okay. Okay, and I like I'm with you on Moonlight. That's one of the movies that I saw was Moonlight. I loved it. I thought it was brilliant. But here's the thing. You you know me. I'll do a prediction based on what I think is going to win, not what I think should win. So, I'm going to say Hacksaw Ridge probably might win because war movies tend to do quite good in this category. Yeah. That is very I, true. And that does look like a pretty spectacular movie. I, I, I did say I hadn't seen these movie any of these movies. I had seen Arrival, by the way, and I think it's a fabulous film. I don't think it's an Oscar winner, though. I have to agree with you. That was when we were talking yesterday. I said there I saw a few that were good films, but not Oscar worthy. Mm-hmm. Some that were great films, and then some that were Oscar bait. I will say that Moonlight feels like Oscar bait to me in a lot, of, a lot way through it. But, La La Land looks like Oscar bait. To oh me. yeah, absolutely. But mm-hmm. I, I haven't seen it, so I have, I have no opinion on. Like it's got the whore coloring as it's prostituting itself for Oscars. Yeah. That's what La La Land is. <laughs> <laughs> She's got a boosty A and some big tits. <laughs> yeah, yeah. La La Land's just tarting itself up and trotting itself out, showing everything. I, I'm sorry. Like, I'm sure it's an enjoyable film, but... If you want to win an Oscar, you got to show some leg. Yeah, but it's showing, like, it's bending over and showing a lot. Like. <laughs> it's not the adult film awards. <laughs> <laughs> it might as well be sometimes. All right, for... <laughs> All right. For foreign language film, your nominees are Land of Mine, A Man Called Ove, The Salesman, 
Tana, and Tony Erdman. The British shit stick. I've seen the trailers for all of these movies. They all look pretty good. Yeah, they all do. They actually, they all... I want to see these more than some of the Best Picture nominees, <laughs> if I'm honest. Yeah, and that's the problem with foreign language films. Sometimes they're really hard to get your hands on unless they get Oscar nominations. Oh, and then yes. at least they'll get a domestic release. I went with Land of Mine because it was really the only one I remembered <laughs> out mm. of all the trailers. So it's the only one that stuck with me. Well, I, I, A Man Called Ove, I looked at it. It looked... I, it looked like something I would truly enjoy um, mm-hmm. because it's very it's dark comedy. Mm-hmm. I think it's Swedish or Danish. I'm not sure which. But what I actually went in the end with was the salesman because okay. of the subject matter of that particular film. Is and this does be. follow the rule of which one's the most depressing? Yes, yes, it yes. does. Yes, yeah. it does. I went with the one that I I wanted to see most out of what I was able to to, to see in trailers and read, and I want to see Tony Erdman, so I went. With that one. All that right. one also looks pretty it, it good. It's like a lot of fun. Look at that. Not, none of us are saying the same things. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm i always fascinated with the foreign language stuff. And I think it's a shame that some of these don't get Best Picture nods. It's really rare that they get a nod past foreign language. I know. And it's sort of like these these are films. Like when you're talking about Best Picture, it doesn't have to be in English to be the best fucking picture. Yeah. Like why not? If you're going to have a Miss Universe pageant, like have other aliens like don't think about it it's this this very narrow view that i kind of pisses me off sometimes mm-hmm. oh we'll, we're gonna get into political talk about the oscars in general i'm sure later on in the conversation oh, sure. here <laughs> especially as we get into the big categories because i have some pretty serious thoughts about some kerfuffles but we'll get to mm-hmm. that when we get to that oh. sure uh makeup and hairstyling Something I know so much about. <laughs> <laughs> I can see the glint of light off his balding head. Yes. <laughs> hey, you can still like to do hair even if you don't have as much as other people. <laughs> I'm not great at math. I still enjoy it. There's this. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> in her spare time, she reads math books. She doesn't understand what's going on in them, but she reads them. I the understand numbers them are mostly. Pretty. <laughs> numbers look nice. <laughs> They're pre- when you get the right answer, it's so satisfying. <laughs> Derivatives and integrals, but then you get into integrals and there's rules. And I hate, yeah, I, I love it, but I hate it. <laughs> okay, love let's hate get into the nominees. Love, yeah, sorry. Love, hate relationship sorry, a calculus. With a calculus. Uh, <laughs> okay, so we only have three nominees in this category. We have A Man Called Ove, Star Trek Beyond, and Suicide Squad. Motherfucker. Now, what, it's A Man Called Ove. That's what threw me, because the other two, they make sense. But Suicide Squad, the fact that even made any kind of list whatsoever is just baffling to me. But all right, I I don't know. I didn't think there was anything spectacular about hair or makeup in Suicide Squad. Um, uh, I didn't sorry, see but... enough of Mano Ove from except for the trailer and just didn't see. So for me, Star Trek Beyond because I have seen that movie and the makeup's heavy and the hairstyling's pretty cool and. Let's face it, it's the only thing it's going to ever get. <laughs> we have a consensus on that one from my end, at least. Anyhow, I have to agree that I went with Star Trek, Star Trek Beyond because I, A Man Called Ove really doesn't seem to fit in the other category there with the other two, right? Yeah. So, so that could mean that's the one that's going to win. But I'm going with Star Trek Beyond for the same reason you did because it, extensive makeup, extensive hair. Suicide Squad, I think El Diablo's makeup was... Yeah, you're right. And, El Diablo's uh, Killer Croc good. looked freaking fabulous yeah um but I, that was mostly cg wasn't it yeah, yeah well no i think a lot of that was actually really practical, practical. Yeah. Well, yeah they were trying to keep their budget down on yeah. that movie and I've, I've sort of i've changed my mind on that because i actually had suicide squad because of that but i'm like oh it doesn't kind of like go more into the realm of an effect rather than hair and makeup so yeah no i've changed my star trek beyond because i'm like that's more makeup oh look at that we all went star trek because really, that is the only one that's going to win. Um, I am going to yell it. really loudly if it's Suicide Squad. <laughs> like, fuck that movie! <laughs> There's going to be a scream heard around the world. Now for Best Musical Achievement in Original Score. <laughs> Jackie, La La Land, Lion, Moonlight, and Passengers. Shit, Swizzler. Mm. Having not seen any of these movies and. Trailers usually aren't indicative of their scores. No. I'm t- I I kind of just went with the the one that was up for the most nominations, and I went with La La Land on that one because it's got a lot of music in it. I think there are. I'm going to go 
reference another movie I watched, The Red Turtle, from the animated thing. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a shame that wasn't up for best score, because the music in that's really good, but... I'm guessing they didn't think about it. Well, is that <laughs> they probably didn't think about submitting it? It's that derision for like animated film. They don't think of it. It's that's why they have separate animated movie as mm-hmm. a category because they don't consider it like a real film yet. I, uh, which is just, unfortunate because there are some animated good. films which are definitely best qualified picture. for best pictures or best scores. Oh, yeah. for sure. Especially musically, so, so many of these animated films have amazing music. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, like some of them just they evoke more in me than some of the other films I've ever There's seen. There's some animated films that tell a story with just the music and the animation with no dialogue. Quite frequently, you see that a lot. That's yes. Red Turtle. Yeah. No dialogue in Red Turtle. Oh, I love that. Yeah. See, I haven't even seen it and I knew that, um, yeah. <laughs> apparently. <Nice. laughs> so, you know, proving my point as we get closer to that what category. Uh, so, if, yeah, for me, I went with La La Land. Uh, it looks like we're agreeing again. And, I, again, because it's a musical focus and uh, there's going to be a lot of jazz music in there and mm-hmm. it's going to be timely and appropriate for the, for the movie, I'm going to go with La La Land. I wanted it to be Lion. Lion, mm-hmm. like the music in that was just astounding. Mm-hmm. Um, like it really like it evoked the whole feel of the movie. I don't know why Moonlight's in there. I found the music really distracting in Moonlight. Oh, see, I liked it. That was one of my things I kind mm-hmm. of liked more. But I, I went off the off the path with that. I, I went with Jackie. I figured they're going to do something a little bit off piece okay. with that. All right, now uh, best music original song. We have Audition, The Fools Who Dream, La La Land. You have Can't Stop the Feeling, Trolls. City of Stars, La La Land, The Empty Chair, Jim, The James Foley Story, and How Far I'll Go, Moana. Shit. Wow. I've listened to all of these pieces. I don't like, even though the odds are in favor of La La Land, I didn't like either one of them. <laughs> ah, and then I'll, I'll tell you my reason um, behind the whole thing. I, I thought Justin Timberlake's Can't Stop the Feeling was, was all right. I think the crowd pleaser is uh, How Far I'll Go, although I prefer oh, sure. the original vocals from the film rather than yes. the one that's nominated for the post credit version. But I think the one I had the most emotional response to, but I don't think is the best sounding one, was The Empty Chair, Jim the James Foley mm-hmm. story, and that was Sting. And I, I think I'm going to go with that one because I had such an emotional response to just listening to the music. Like, it's not my kind of music, it's not a happy kind of music, but you certainly have an emotional response when you hear it. So, I'm going to go with Sting on this one. All right. Hmm. I think you've got a point there. I'm still going with Can't Stop the Feeling because I kind of like it. Okay. I mean, I I, 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 I thought it was a great song, too. Uh, Okay. And I still... I'm going with what I like. I I don't care who wins. I mean, (laughs) I, I, I wouldn't be upset if Moana won that. Oh no no that's a good like yeah, yeah like you say but I like the the singing from the original like the film rather than that post credit yeah but I I voted in a certain way because after last year's burn fucking so oh mad. I know the one we want like, still that, so mad that was from the James Bond Spectre <sighs> and as a big Bond fan I was really hated that intro music so bad that was nominated like I thought it was one of the worst ones the Bond franchise has ever had and it fucking won I know we were both livid was, yeah I'm livid so I'm going I'm going with that tradition and going with the one I don't like the most so <laughs> <laughs> I chose the one I hated. <laughs> well, not hated. It's not. It's not a bad song, but it's just not great. City of Stars, La La Land. Okay, <laughs> different ones for all of us. I, you know, somebody had to go with La La Land. I, yeah. you know, I, I personally, I think probably La La Land will probably win one. Well, of them. They're, in there, they're in there twice, so that's yeah. a, good, a pretty good sign. Um, mm. I didn't mind City of uh, Stars. It was Audition that I didn't like. I went. Uh, I went see, I didn't mind Casey Audition. Grano. I think Audition I might like have a stronger chance, but that's, like I said, I went with the one I disliked the most. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. The way that category went last year, you might actually have that. I know. If I get this, <laughs> this is just going to how I'm going to vote from here on in. The one I like the least. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're into project- bleh, bleh. production <laughs> design. Our nominees are Arrival, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, Hail Caesar, La La Land, and passengers. Bullshit. You know, okay, that, this one's a tough one. I liked Arrival. I don't think this production design no. is super standout on this. I just watched Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Great mm-hmm. pro- production design. Uh, I've only seen the trailer for Hail Caesar, but I was really impressed with what I saw, what I saw there. Seen the movie. Um, and 
Coen Brothers. I, I love the Coen Brothers. Mm-hmm. La La Land, uh, from my understanding, kind of looks like a stage thing, and yeah. I really do dig that look. And honestly, I don't remember Passengers, <laughs> despite having watched the trailer. So that yeah. might be kind of That's that telling. Jennifer Lawrence, Chris Pratt one. That got just panned, too. Like, like I, I haven't seen it, but everything I read, it's like, it's just... It sounds terrible. Yeah, it yeah. sounds like it's just not a good movie. Well, just the story of it sounds terrible. I'm like, why would I watch that? Well, the story, the story itself, itself sounded kind of interesting. But, I mean, it's been done. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I mean, the way they went with it is like, yeah. But. yeah. Well, based on all of that, uh, I, you know, I'm going to go with Coen Brothers on this one. They've won Oscars before. I'm going to go with uh, production designers for Hail Caesar. Ooh, then then we are in agreement. Because yeah. I, I, I've seen that movie. I watched it. And yeah, it's totally... The production design, I thought, was really good in yeah. Hail Caesar. It and totally I, captures that area of Hollywood. If I hadn't run out of time last night, I would have totally watched Hail Caesar. So. It's not a bad um, film. I'm going with La La Land because they're nominated in so many categories. And they're not going to win the bigs. I don't think they are going to win the bigs. Yeah. But I think they're going to win a lot of little ones. And I think this is going to be one of them. You know, and I don't disagree with that. I think you're right. And me going against La La Land so much might hurt hurt my take on and uh, I might not come home with that KFC coupon. No. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, for Achievement in Best Animated Short Film, Blind Vaisha, which is a telefilm from Canada. Mm-hmm. Yay! Woo-hoo! Borrowed Time, which is two Pixar guys who did this as a side project. It is not Pixar, but... If anything, the fact that they got nominated, Pixar's probably going to keep their animators more busy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Pearl Cider and Cigarettes. Uh, an interesting and very stylized piece from a gentleman out in Vancouver. It, Yay! Yes, Another Canadian one. Pearl and Piper. Piper is that, Pixar. Yep. It's Pixar. Now, Pearl was a re- really interesting one because it was a 360 kind of virtual reality experience i've Uh. i've seen three out of the five i really hated everything about uh blind vaisha it it looks like those telefilms from when we were kids that would run Uh. as commercials i'm just like this already annoys me and i only watch the see that's why i chose it (laughs) i just oh i chose it too i hated it (laughs) okay well i'm definitely going against it i liked borrowed time but it feels more like a vignette it's probably the most technically sound on this list. It's gorgeous. I saw the trailer for it and I was like, "Holy yeah, I've, crap!" Yeah, I've seen the whole thing. seven minutes long. I wanted to watch it. I it's, just ran out of time. It is very yeah, me good. Too. It is very good, but it feels like a vignette, and I think that's going to work against it. But technically, it's the best one on this list. Nice. It's gorgeous, and as well it should from a couple of Pixar guys. Uh, Pearl cider and cigarettes. Um, I think it's probably the one of the longer pieces on this list. I haven't seen it. It's um, it's more traditionally animated. And it's got a lot of still kind of stuff to help tell its yeah. story, and it's more of a crime feel. Couldn't go with that one. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, Piper is really sweet. It's really cute Pixar uh, film. And they played it before um, when I went to see Finding Dory. Okay, <clears throat> I, and I really enjoyed it. I thought it was just uh, cute and um, funny. So and, adorable. Yeah, this little Piper who's afraid uh, to come out. And, oh, the and water. It, it's kind of stepping out and starting to grow up um, and fend for himself. So it's a really cool story. And then there's Pearl, which I thought was a really neat experience because I watched this on my iPad and I was basically yep. standing up and walking around the room. And so because it all happens in this car and it's this story of this guy and his kid as the kid starts growing up and their experiences that they share in in this car through this song that they share with each other and the kid grows up and actually records the song and becomes famous for the song she even refurbishes the car after one point when it stops running I mean it's great and you know I'm looking around the car and I'm like well shit you know I'm not really sold on these virtual reality thing especially when I'm seeing the games that are coming out and they just kind of look gimmicky and then I see yeah. something like this and I'm like huh okay and I had a real emotional response to it and it was the one that kind of touched me the most so I am going with Pearl and you know when you talk about that I've only I only watched the trailer for this one but I was watching it you know okay at the beginning of the movies where they have the little girl and the snowman that animated feature mm-hmm. was that is that for like Telus I can't remember which company that's for 
Oh, I, I, I don't know. I thought that That's was... what it felt like to me. Is yeah. It felt like a Telus commercial, like that warm, oh, we're with you your entire life. Tell us. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I got from Pearl. Okay, well, fair. I'm wondering how they even ran that to qualify on the list because, you know, these have to get theatrical festival runs. And how do you get that full experience on a traditional screen? You can't. No. Well, yeah, I mean, you can't can't get it on the screen, but you can probably have it where it's they they choose your perspective for you I suppose. and do it, roll it out like that because yeah. I, th- I suppose that's how you could I guess do I it. mean you could put it on a screen and then then have somebody's experience on that screen but true I don't know it was it was something different and I'm like well if this is where animation might be going I might invest in nice. in some a headset at some point but if I could just do 360 through youtube or whatever oh yeah that's fine i mean they they have those functions and you don't need to have virtual reality glasses to see it yeah if they don't have that accessibility there's not much of a point in yeah so you could watch this on your phone or your (laughs) ipad or whatever it does sound interesting i'm still going with blind vasher though okay all right well i'm going going with the the shittiest looking one (laughs) Uh, nice and now for live action short film uh, Enemies Intérieur, La Femme et le TGV, Silent Nights, Sing, and Time Code. Lame-ass teacher's pets. I am so glad you had to read that one. Me too. <laughs> I had, I had, a, I have a bit of a problem. Like, I, I can't do, like, the, fl- like, the, my French is not as good, but that's as close as I can get. Like, it's better than mine. That's the thing. Yeah. It sounds convincing. <laughs> mine, I, mine would never have sounded convincing. And like, there he goes again, trying to say words he has <laughs> no idea how to pronounce. <laughs> yeah, just watch a lot of French films. You're like, oh, yes, I feel so French. <laughs> I know nothing about any of these. My gut told me to go with time code, but I actually went with the one that I could least pronounce. Mm-hmm. So I went with the first one. And the interior? That's the one. That's right. the one I went. Because <laughs> it's it sounds like it, it could be depressing. Well, Enemy from Within is Yes. It is. Oh, that's a cool title. All right. I like yeah. that. I can go with that. Yeah, I, I knew what it meant. I can't say it, but I knew what it meant, surprisingly enough. Um, <laughs> I went with my gut and went with time code. Okay. And I went, because I watch all the trailers for it, this one is a little more uplifting one. It was La Femme et le TGV. It did sound interesting, actually. I, I, like I, I was reading the synopsis, yeah. and, and, and this, this whole friendship between this lady and her train driver sounded really interesting. Yeah, like, and she lives by the track, so every time it goes by, like, she's waiting for him. And it's oh. a whole, this sort of romance, but, like, from afar. But how it can come from afar in, like, now? Yeah. Yeah. I had to leave at least one category with, that was a complete guess for me. I, d- I deliberately didn't even watch trailers. But there's another one called Silent <laughs> Nights, which I, I I liked as well, but I don't know if it would win. Mm-hmm. Um, it was It's Danish, mm-hmm. and uh, this other guy, he's a refugee, but he's homeless, and he falls in love with this other woman who's, like, Danish. And they, I think there's, like, an undercurrent of the whole thing of, like, racism and, like... There, it, it's a deep film. I definitely want to watch it. I need to try and get my hands on it. Don't know how, but hopefully I can. Uh, well, most it. of these will become available after the Oscars, and I did find some on. Um, you, you couldn't find them on YouTube, but uh, what's the, the one trailers. that's more with short films? Vimeo. Vimeo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Vimeo is okay, the one I, I I found uh, some of this stuff on. So, and some of them you have to buy on Vimeo, but that's all right or to rent. Oh, for sure. So, but I'll do there. that. Yeah, I have no, I had no problem. I bought some that. stuff on Vimeo. Yeah, yeah, quite like Vimeo. There's a lot of cool stuff on Vimeo. Men and chicken. Well, we're doing a lot of product pushes. We better like tag them all in our post. <laughs> we should so we talk about them. Maybe they'll start like. Maybe they'll like us. Hey, about Vimeo, us. have you ever sponsored a podcast? Because we could be your guys. Yeah, <laughs> we'll take we'll take it. We'll take it. Sound editing, Arrival, Deepwater Horizon, Hacksaw Ridge, La La Land, and Sully. Chittsburg. Mm-hmm. Having only seen Arrival, and I can't. I, I just you need to watch these movies to really judge sound editing. So as Trish said, I think, and Sam said actually, I think it's going to win a lot of these smaller categories. So I went with La La Land. Uh-huh. See, and I haven't seen La La Land, but I have seen Arrival, and just the the way they handled this sound, especially from the alien species. It the was idea. really mm. good. It was really good. And that's why I went with it, because I don't think it's good enough to win in, in the other categories, mm. but this is one where it excelled. And it's well, also... see, that I would have put as, as a sound mix rather than a sound Yeah. Mix, but... Yeah. 
See, I think that that's the thing with it, with uh, a lot of the movie, because of Arrival, it's content. It's not that heavily, it's sort of sci-fi, and sci-fi does not perform well at the Oscars. It just doesn't. It doesn't, but sci-fi but does, it does do technical well stuff in like technical this. awards. Yes. That's yes. what I'm saying, yeah. yeah. So Yeah, you're absolutely right there. So you went with the Arrival as well. Well, no, actually, yeah. in this one, I went with Hacksaw Ridge, because again, okay. I'm like going, I'm, I'm trying in my hierarchies, war movies do better than sci-fi, but sci-fi does better than drama and like yeah. sound editing. There's so. a lot in that edit, too, so you, yeah. might, you might be right on that one. So I'll be interested to see how that one shakes out. For mm-hmm. Achievement in Sound Mixing. Arrival, Hacksaw Ridge, La La Land, Rogue One, A Star Wars Story, 13 Hours, The Secret Soldiers of Benghazi. Fucking circus. Oh, nice. All right. Well, an an interesting list there. You got two sci-fis, a war movie, a musical, and a documentary, I guess. I'm guessing. 13 hours? I don't know. Sort of. I thought that was, or maybe it isn't. I don't know. <laughs> I don't well, remember the trailer. There were so many that kind of looked this similar to What's that to me. Michael Bay one? It's the same I topic. I have no idea. I'm not sure, but... It, if it's Michael um, Bay, I erased it from my brain. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> that one, if you want to go with most depressing, that's probably going to be the one. Yeah, well... But sound mixing doesn't win on depressing. No, sound mixing no. wins on excitement. Yeah. If, if anything we know... The Lucas guys invented sound mixing. Yeah. <laughs> I had to go with Rogue One to Star Wars. Story. Me too. Ditto. Okay, there you go. Rogue <laughs> it's One. A clean sweep for Rogue One. Rogue One's going to get some love from us. All right. So, visual effects. In this category, nominations are Deep Water Horizon, Doctor Strange, The Jungle Book, Kubo and the Two Strings, and Rogue One, A Star Wars Story. What the shit? Uh, I mean, great list as a whole. Lots of um, more oh, genre pieces in here. Deepwater Horizon looks good. It's the only one on this list I actually haven't seen. Yeah. So, but trailer-wise, I'm like, oh, I should have watched that. But just enough time. Doctor Strange, honestly, we saw a lot of that yeah. in a different movie. <laughs> it was our yeah, Inception did a lot of that. Yeah, with the Twisty City stuff. So, unfortunately, I can't give that one to Doctor plus, Strange. Plus comic book movie Oscars. It's just not happening. Yeah. Um, you could say we've seen a lot of what they did in Jungle Book in Life of Pi. Kubo and the Two Strings. I mean, Leica has got some... Yeah. Their, their visual stuff is fantastic with their uh, stop motion animation. And, of course, Rogue One has got some great effects in there as oh, well. Sure. But, you know, stuff we've seen in Star Wars movies before. Overall, I think I was most impressed with the visual effects in the Jungle Book. So I personally went with the Jungle Book, even though... Life of Pies kind of already did it once already. I came out of that going, Jesus, like, normally you can really see the CG. They just mm-hmm. did it so beautifully. So I had to go with Jungle Book. See, and I went with Star Wars simply because they did a great job of capturing that 70s look with that uh, with modern, yeah. modern technology. Like, they really mm-hmm. wanted to make it feel like the prequel series because it was leading into that series. So I, that's why I went with Star Wars. Because it wasn't just effects, it was the overall look of the film as well, as far as I was concerned. Yeah. Okay. Although it was at somebody, I, I can't remember where I saw it, where they talked about the one thing they never captured was the hair. Like, people were, all the men were furrier in the earlier <laughs> movies. <laughs> like, a lot of porn stashes that they don't have in the new one. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but in this one I also went with the Jungle Book because I think with um, the way the Academy likes to look at this sometimes is how mm. seamless it is um, the Jungle Book is really good I think it'll still win regardless of that whole King Louie thing which I, I just, pulled me out of the movie completely I hated the, I hated the King Louie bit too it's too big too we'll, big. We'll, we'll talk more about the Jungle Book in a future episode I think we should compare the animated film to oh, the live sure. action film there's a lot of adaptations of that film but we'll we'll do the two Disneys at some point oh yes yes yeah but yeah so yeah it was Jungle Book for me okay okay so next category is writing adapted screenplay we have Arrival Fences, Hidden Figures, Lion, and Moonlight. I've only seen Arrival on this list, but I've seen all the trailers for these things. There are, I mean, there are some really good scripts here. Mm -hmm. I think overall, because I I, I think Moonlight's going to get a lot of good nods, and the director on this, Barry Jenkins, was also the screenwriter on this, so I'm going to go with Moonlight. Yeah, I, I I wanted to go with Moonlight, but like I say, like I'm looking at adapted screenplay. I'm trying to predict what they think mm-hmm. is going to be the one. So I went with Lion. 
Okay. Oh, I so want it to be Lion, but I went with Hidden Figures. See, yeah, that's another one I want. I want either Moonlight or Hidden Figures, but it's probably... See, the reason I'm going with, I went with that is because there's going to be a lot of wins in direct response to last year's whitewashing yeah. fiasco. Mm-hmm. I, I, I kept that in mind. Yeah. And that I was did, but I think I they still might light. miss. Yeah. See, I, I, and I, was, I was washing between Lion and Hidden Figures because, I mean, Lion would still kind of cover that whitewashing issue because it's not an all white cast and it's so good and it will and it covers that whole thing where when you're talking about whitewashing you're talking about like identity i mean he's he's been adopted by these white people yeah. in australia and where is his yeah. identity so, and, and, and you, I, you may very well be right but i'm gonna stick with hidden figures anyhow i yeah i'd love okay. that to be it yeah, Hidden Figures, like, I'm still going to watch that even after this. Oh, it's a must-see. It looks really good. Of mm-hmm. all the ones I've watched, Hidden Figures and Lion are the t- my two absolute must-sees. And then Hacksaw mm-hmm. Ridge is definitely something that people should watch as and well. Hidden Figures, it, ju- it has, like, a lot of the people I love to watch in movies. That's the other pull for Hidden Figures. Yeah. Like, yeah. These women are great. I will watch them in anything. Okay, for writing original screenplay, Hell or High Water, La La Land. The Lobster, Manchester by the Sea, and 20th Century Woman. You really gonna fuck this up for me? I'm gonna go with what La La Land on this one. I Again, this was Damien Chazelle who uh, wrote and directed Whiplash. I don't, because I don't think he's gonna mm-hmm. win the big awards, I think they're gonna give him one on the small one. So, And if nothing else, I mean, you're, writing, you're not just writing a movie, you're writing music in the movie as well so yeah i'm gonna go with la la land on that one i went with manchester by the sea because if you want to talk about depressing oh yeah that's another reason why i just <laughs> made my choices is for um, depressing. So I, I did go with manchester by the sea i the only other one i've actually seen is hell or high water and it's really good and it's a great story but i don't know if it's a best original screenplay la la land it's hard to say i mean like i said i because I, I i do think they're gonna win a lot of their smaller categories but i still think this one that manchester by the sea is gonna get it See, and I went, and I'm just going by the trailer in this one. I still need to see the film because it does look really good. Hell or High Water, I did, because I think it's going to pull into what those people, like, because of the content of it as well, like, the, how people are being subjugated by this, and, like, guys robbing banks. I mean, I know that's, like, kind of Oscar Beatty as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not told in an Oscar bait way, though. Yeah. yeah, but I'm, I don't know. I'm just going by the trailer. If you've seen The Lobster, it's a great, great, great original screenplay. It is one of the best. Cool. Documentary short subject. Extremis, 4.1 Miles, Joe's Violin, Watani, My Homeland, and The White Helmets. You know, these are always tough to pick because most people never get to see them. I've seen two of them. I've seen Extremis and The White Helmets. The White Helmets is, is quite good. You can see it on Netflix right now as well as Extremis. And 4.1 Miles, Joe's Violin, and Watani, the home, my home. I just, I don't know anything about them. I never got a chance to mm-hmm. watch their trailers. The White Helmets is about these uh, gentlemen who rescue, rescue people from from war-torn Syria. You know, mm-hmm. when they're dropping bombs and stuff, they're the ones that go in and rescue they're people. They're on the ground. They're on the ground. So, you know, it was really interesting. And then there's Extremis, which is about people making those final decisions about their loved ones who are in the hospital on their deathbeds and there's uh. just no hope for them. It is 20 minutes of sorrow. <laughs> it oh, is, wow. It's like, I, I don't know how I made it without bawling my eyes out. Oh my it was gosh. just, I, after that I watched a cartoon because I'm like, <laughs> this, is, this hurt my soul. Despite I don't think it's like overly well made, I'm still going to go with Extremis on this one because it's just just so sad. Ugh. It's so hard to watch these people go through with, with these decisions. That sounds so upsetting. It is upsetting. Yeah, uh, yeah I follows my most depressing rule. Yeah. Well, well they're that all mine. pretty freaking depressing. I mean, Joe's yeah. Violin probably is the least depressing on there as far as like subject matter. Mm-hmm. Right. I went with 4.1 Miles because I, I, I think that there are going to be some nods to films that address the the whole Syrian refugee um, yeah. Yeah. Cri- uh, crisis or the, or the European refugee, I think they're, they're calling it yeah. now, because mm-hmm. it's not just Syria that, that people are fleeing to Europe from. And that's what this film is about, is that 4.1 Miles is this boat that's assigned to rescue refugees or stuck in the water. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's very similar to, to White Helmets. Yeah. So. yeah, and see, that's I, I was along the same line of thinking, but I went White Helmets. I mean, similar... Mm-hmm. 
content, but I think that's what those nods are going to go to. Yeah, I kind of went against my gut on that one. I, I kind of wanted to go with White Helmets as well. And I was going to, but I was reading a little bit about the White Helmets, and I think the reason that they're not going to go with it is because the documentary apparently is is kind of colored like most documentaries I thought it was too yeah. when the documentaries I it, are so. yeah but but yeah because there is quite a bit of controversy about the white helmets like, yeah and, and yeah. that's that may be why it gets passed over in flavor yeah. or something else I think Extremis is is just the fact like there's no narration it's just them on in in those moments of of sorrow wow. and it's it's just what it is I gotta so, see that yeah I like sometimes I mean, no sometimes I'm a masochist gotta see it yeah <laughs> Documentary feature, Fire at Sea, I Am Not Your Negro, Life Animated, OJ, Made in America, 13th. Now, I was only able to find one of these, and I've seen 13th. It's a really interesting documentary about the 13th Amendment, the abolishing slavery, mm-hmm. and but there's a loophole in, in for criminals and how yeah. that evolved in the justice system and the increasing of, of uh, jail populations it was an interesting documentary i also think it's a bit slanted for yeah. to to get a certain point of view across i think it's still something to be seen it's a, it's a really interesting documentary i i quite enjoyed it but it's it's part of part of doc, about what documentaries is is emotion so like i don't need to see another oj thing Fire at Sea looked very interesting. I'm Not Your Negro looked really interesting as well. But the one I had the most emotional response to, Mm -hmm. and that was just the trailer, was Life Animated. So it's about a kid with autism who's completely disconnected from the world and finds a connection through animation. Oh, nice. And, and, And... his parents learn to communicate with them by doing the voices from the the cartoons he watches, um, Disney cartoons and things. Oh, I think uh, I'd like heard about Iago. this. And this man grows up, and he's accepting his college degree and stuff, and he's connected through the world through cartoons. And I mm-hmm. think that's really wonderful, especially for a guy like me who loves animation. Yeah. So I went with Life Animated. Nice. I have not seen any of these, but based on the synopsis that I did, did read, and I didn't even watch the trailers for these ones because I was running out of time. Mm-hmm. Um, I went with 13th just because I want to see it. It was it was quite good. It it's on good. Netflix, so yeah. you can totally watch that right yeah. now. I totally went with this one. And I, I just went with uh, I Am Not Your Negro. Yeah, and it's... Uh, Title uh, alone. Yeah, yeah, it's a similar theme, I think. Um, it touched on certain bases there. I think 13th is just very by the numbers kind of a documentary that's why i, I couldn't and I totally want to see that, that one too i think that would be cool. it was good i think uh, everybody should see it it's a very tight documentary i just i don't think it's gonna win but yeah that's uh that's just me so um we all got different ones on there so that's gonna be interesting now we're gonna skip this next category the next one on my list is directing but we're gonna save that until just before best picture for sure uh, mm-hmm. of course so for achievement in costume design allied Fantastic Beasts, and Where to Find Them, Florence Foster Jenkins, Jackie, and La La Land. The Cock Thistle. Tough freaking category. It is yes. a very, very tough category. It's a hard ca- I don't. We don't usually do well in this category, do we? No. And, you know, I've seen the trailers for all this stuff. Um, I've actually seen one of these movies, and that's Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. And the costume design is really great on that, and that's kind of why I went with that one. Um, so that, that's my choice, but it was really tough cause I almost went with Florence Foster Jenkins cause I thought they really did yeah. a good job there as well. But then again, I thought they captured the look of, of, uh, Jackie as well uh, in that time True. period, but you have a lot of footage to reference for all that costume. So yeah. I'm like, I feel like it's almost a cheat. <laughs> well, that's yeah. why I went with it. See, um, <laughs> and that's why I went with Florence Foster Jenkins cause I know that's the cheat there. And so that's what I thought. Yeah, and I just know the Academy loves anything to do with the Kennedys. True. I, I mean, yeah. America loves anything to do with the Kennedys. So, and, and, and they love that time period. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's why it's called Camelot. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so that's why I went, did go with Jackie, because it, 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 the Kennedy love affair still goes on. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, let's, let's have another missile crisis. It'll be great. 
<laughs> Maybe that's why people want to go back. Hey, let's <laughs> let's face off with the Russians again. Woohoo! Um, yeah, <laughs> only this will be times, only times. this time it'll be Korea or China. Fun. Anyway, uh, sorry, on unpolitical. This is the Oscars. Politics is going to come drink, into it. Take a drink. I'll take a drink. <laughs> All right. We haven't said the magic name yet. Not no, once. No, we're being good. I almost did there though. <laughs> yeah. So um, for the next category, cinematography, we have Arrival, La La Land, Lion, Moonlight, and Silence. Fuck me. Oh my goodness. Yes. Um, like they're getting. These are getting hard now. Yes. You know, I, and, and I've seen Arrival off that list. It's the only one I have. Uh, I actually have seen, but I have watched all the trailers for these. And the one, you know, I, I was really impressed with what they did with Arrival cinematography wise. Nice. So that that's the one I went with. But man, they, they're all such good looking movies. True. They are. They are. Um, I was not as impressed with Arrival as you were, Jay. I found mm-hmm. it to be really dark a lot of the time. Which made it a little challenging to watch. Maybe it's just a, a, the way it was, we had our TV set or something. But yeah, I was a lot of times I'm going, I can't really see what's what's happening here. I th- I thought that what I could see looked great, mm-hmm. but yeah, there was there was sometimes where I was, I was like, like, what are they doing? Yeah, no, I, th- I think that might be your television because I never had yeah. a response like that to yeah. that. Um, yeah, and it might maybe, be different in the theater. Yeah, maybe, and that may be it. I want Lion to win because it just blew me away, absolutely blew me away. But I'm going with La La Land again because. Smaller categories, and I mean, this isn't a small category, no. but but I, I think that based on what I have seen, movie. it is a really good looking movie. Really nicely yeah. lit. I I don't know. I I I've seen Moonlight. That was the one I've seen. I really liked it. Um, mm. I want it to win, but again, I went with La La Land because I'm like, it's that's what they want. You're probably right. It probably will be La La Land on that one, but I'm gonna stick with my arrival. My arrival. My arrival. Is this me? No, this is me. We're moving on to animated feature film. Please don't make the super suit green. We're animated. Kubo and the Two Strings, Moana, My Life as a Zucchini, The Red Turtle, and Zootopia. All right, finally a category where I've seen most of these. Uh, (laughs) The only one I didn't get a chance to see was My Life as a Zucchini. Um, It just hasn't reached us over here yet. No. So I I couldn't find any sources for this one. All I could find was a trailer. Yeah, I watched the trailer, but boy, does it look heavy. I know. <laughs> like, it is, it kind of got that clay stop motion look to it. And it's about a kid named Zucchini who is um, in foster care. Mm-hmm. And so all these kids are in this foster care and building a new family within foster care through their broken homes. There's some, even the trailer's depressing. Yeah, that trailer hit me and I'm like, oh, but I must watch. Yeah. Very interesting. Uh, Kubo and the Two Strings. It's from Laika, the guys who made yep. Coraline. You know you're going to get something really special there, but I think they've told better stories. Yep. Kubo's really fun movie. I really like it, but it it just it doesn't have the depth of a lot of these other films. Yeah, it's stylistically incredible. But. Yeah, Moana, Disney is this is Disney Studios. So much fun. This really feels like they're back on track. It, when I watch Moana, it, it's fun. It feels like it's if it wasn't the CG style, it would have fit just fine in that Little Mermaid era. Oh yeah, it's just gorgeous movie. The Red Turtle. It's probably the most stripped down stylistically Mm -hmm. of these pieces it's more traditionally animated it's a co-production by studio canal and studio uh, studio canal is french yes and studio ghibli in japan and the track record on studio ghibli is very ghibli's uh, amazing yeah and it's got a very herge kind of style you know tintin very that's kind of looks like tintin there's very little dialogue in the film. It's just kind of shouts like, hey, there's nice. r- there's no real dialogue. And it f- follows the story of this guy who's been, uh, he's basically a castaway. He's trapped on this island. And every time he builds a raft and try to leave, it's destroyed by this big red turtle. Nice. Hmm. Turtle comes back onto the land and he beats the shit out of it. He's been very respectful to all the life on this island up to this point. He's just frustrated. But this so, turtle's messing with him. And he turns the turtle on its back and it's out in the sun for a couple of days. And then he starts having pangs of guilt. Mm. So he's watering it, keeping it in the shade oh, wow. and stuff. And the turtle turns into a woman and crawls out of the shell. It's very interesting. And then we see them 
fall in love and have a family and then their kid leaves. It's it's basically right up to their deaths. I think if you're an animation fan, everybody should see this film. Like initially I was like, "Oh boy, I don't know if I'm going to like this." And then and then I realized I'm like I'm really invested emotionally in this film. It's the one I think is most deserving to win. It won't. No. It's going to be Zootopia. Yeah. Zootopia I, th- I think Moana technically is the, the most technically sound of the bunch. Oh, yes. But I think Zootopia's got everything going on for it. It's got a fairly deep message in the story without being heavy-handed with it. It's very entertaining. There's lots going on. Like, they've got this very complex world it's built. So I'm going to go with Zootopia and, on this And one. the thing with the animated category is if it does well, it has a better chance, which mm. is sort of counter to what the best film has yeah, no Pixar it. on this list. No, but like Zootopia did the best. Yeah, so both, I'm thinking both Disney Studio, two Disney Studios on there, um, and Zootopia did win the Golden Globe. I I don't like using the Golden Globes. If anything, oh, no. the Oscars like to avoid what the Golden Globes do. But I think Zootopia's got the one with the most balance and will probably win. Although yes. the one I think the most deserving to win would be the Red Turtle. But I think Zootopia will be yeah, the one that actually I still need wins. to see the Red Turtle, but I've seen Moana. I loved Moana. Yeah, and uh, you know what? I haven't seen any of them. And actually, I've, I haven't even seen the trailers for most of them. I've seen a couple minutes of Zootopia and a couple minutes of Moana. But I went with Kubu and the Two Strings because it's the one I'm most interested in seeing. Okay. Yeah, I think I think. Well, Leica, I was up until this point. Now I want to see the Red Turtle. Yeah, but, I, th- I think Leica's got an Oscar in their future. I just don't think it's this one. Mm-mm. All right. Well, I think we're now we're moving into some big categories here. Yes. Actress in a supporting role. Viola Davis, Fences. Naomi Harris, Moonlight. Nicole Kidman, Lion. Octavia Spencer, Hidden Figures. Michelle Williams, Manchester by the Sea. So for this one, I figured this is what they're going to throw to Moonlight. So I chose Naomi Harris. And that was basically, that's a political move. She's really good in it. She's great in it. Mm -hmm. But I feel like, I I think Octavia Spencer from Hidden Figures probably should get it. I'm nodding, but (laughs) I I, I don't You're like half nodding. I'm half nodding because... You're doing the weirdest nod I've ever seen. um, Yes, well, it was because uh, I I, I kind of agree with you, but I actually think Michelle Williams from Manchester by the Sea really does deserve her nomination and probably deserves to win, but she's not going to. No, Mm -hmm. Um, not... I think it's year. going to be Viola Davis from Fences, actually. Michelle Williams will get a nomination next year for something else and then win. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to go. That's ag- my prediction prediction. I'm going against the grain on this one. I am going to go with Octavia Spencer for Hidden Figures. I really, I've, I'm only basing my choices on trailers, and I was um, really impressed with the performances, exactly. just even in the trailers from Hidden Figures. So I'm going to go with Octavia Spencer. I mean, I can't argue with most of these people. They all deserve their uh, nominations. Nicole Kidman's got one, so that's fine. That was the other <laughs> bit. I was like, I think she's fine. I don't think it's her year. No, and I haven't seen Lion, and as much as it was my favorite film this year, really, she was probably the weakest point in the whole movie. Okay. To me. Yeah. Um, I think that Rooney Mara should have gotten a Best Supporting Actress nomination based on her performance. Right. Yeah, and it's weird. Like, And we've discussed this before, how sometimes the supporting actress stuff is odd. Odd. Like, sometimes it doesn't seem correct. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know what? Uh, it, a lot of the times... You look at the past, and it's like, who can cry the most? Yeah. <laughs> that would be Nicole Kidman in this movie. Um, <laughs> unquestionably. Yeah, well, yeah. If Nicole Kidman wins, we know why. Because it follows the crying rule. The, this is the crying game. <laughs> the Oscar crying game. Yeah. Yeah, really. So we'll see if they're still with the crying rule. And... Uh, yeah, and then we'll yell loudly <laughs> because you yeah. look at some of the people who've won that in the last 10, 15 years. You're like, what the fuck? But overall, looking at this category, looking no, at No, I look people, at this one. This is this was a, the hardest one. I this had... is like the, the, the hardest year for that category. It is. In fact, most of these these acting categories are insane. <laughs> yeah, they are insane. Um, and when we get to, to the act, the actor in leading and supporting roles, I have some things to say. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, a couple things to say. Okay. Yeah. Um, actress in a leading role, Isabel Huppert, L. Ruth Nega, Loving, Natalie Portman, Jackie, Emma Stone, La La Land, Meryl Streep, Florence Foster Jenkins. Mm. This was a tough category. Yes. 
I don't think Meryl Streep's going to win this year, but boy, that movie looks like a lot of fun. And it's... if nothing else, I would love to hear her acceptance speech. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, Flor- I've saw I've seen Floris Fon- Foster Jenkins, and it's it's a decent movie. Yeah, I mean, you get Meryl, but as you know, I have an intense, intense hatred for when people win impersonating another person. It's a fucking impression. If you're going to give awards for impressions, Alec Baldwin should get one this year <laughs> for you know who. Yeah. And as well as uh, oh, Melissa wait, McCarthy for the, Sean Spicer. Take a drink because you still can re- reference yeah. it. <laughs> Everybody's drinking now. And yeah, and, and uh, for Sean Spicer and like uh, uh, Kate McKillen, Kate McKinnon for, like, for everybody else. I feel like I everybody need to change else. my my choice here because because <laughs> I just to me if you're if you're impersonating something that's just fucking bullshit. It's just bullshit. And trust me, um, she nails she nails the the bad singing of Florence Foster Jenkins. She gets it, but I don't want her to win. Like yeah, I don't want her or who, Natalie Portman to win. Who was in last year's Into the Woods? So. <laughs> Yeah, and and it's it's incredible. Like she knows how to do a bad singing thing, but then just the last two minutes nails it out of the park. You're like, oh, that's all in there all the whole time. She's an amazing singer. Yeah. So um, I just I went with Emma Stone La La Land because she was sort of the one that was so different from everybody else. I'm like, uh, that's all I could think of. Like right. I think Ruth Nega should probably get it, but I don't know if she will. And I like Ruth Nega. I don't know. I, I, having seen her in Preacher and, and some other things, and, and I like her as an actress. I, I I haven't seen this role, so I can't judge it. The o- only reason I went with Emma Stone, because I haven't seen any of these performances, not one of them, but she's the only one who's in a best picture, and that's why I went with it, is because she's the only one That who, was my other reasoning, yeah. too. Mm-hmm. Usually, usually you can if you can tie those two together, you'll get it. Yeah. I don't think it's her year yet. I don't think she's quite there yet, but, it's, um, you know, it's another hard category. Isabel... Hopper won the Golden Globe for Elle. And I, I want to see that movie, but it seems like it's going to be a hard one. Yeah, but honestly, I was really impressed just by the trailer with Natalie Portman and Jackie. And yeah, we go with the impression. <laughs> she does a really good impression Yeah, and she Jackie. does. That's the thing. And if you're going by impression, so she's going to win. And you know what? And it might bullshit. be it might be her time. So if, if you want to go with the, with the 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 love affair with the, with the Kennedy's theory, yeah, you could very well be right. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to actually go with, with Natalie Portman for Jackie on this. Did one. Natalie Portman win for Closer or no? I don't think so. Okay, so she hasn't won yet. No, wait, Black, Black Swan. Swan. She Black won for Swan. Black Swan. Yeah. She won for Black Swan. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe yeah. it's it, it is it's, it's a tough category. Like the, the, all of the actor categories are really freaking tough this this year. Yeah, like really tough. Are. It's yeah. really hard to pick out the best. Yeah. And speaking of for best actor in a supporting role, oh Jesus, uh, Mahershala Ali for Moonlight. Oh, I got a thumbs up on that one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jeff Bridges, Hell or High Water. Lucas Hedges, Manchester by the Sea, Dev Patel, Lion, and Michael Shannon, Nocturnal Animals. Chitsburg. This category makes me so mad. <laughs> because <laughs> Dev Patel does not belong in this category. He that's belongs in con- leading actor. That's what confused me, because I watched yeah. the, the trailer for Lion. I'm like, that's the main guy, right? I, I, do not, I still don't understand how they could have put him in supporting role. Makes me so mad, because... There are some other candidates in here that actually deserve to win, but I think Dev Patel's going to win it yeah. because he's actually the lead. Yeah. Right. Well, I wish I would have known that before I made the choice. Change yeah. That. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, I, I, it's I, like when I was watching him, how the fuck is he nominated in Best Supporting? That's, yeah, see, that bothers me, but we had this debate like last year as well with Carol. It doesn't make any fucking sense. Oh, you know mm. what it is? It's how the, the, it, it's how the, 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 the film is submitted to the Academy. They submitted him in the Best Acting category. Or best supporting actor category, so he wouldn't have to compete with the leading actors. He's getting up against supporting actors instead. Mm-hmm. I almost guarantee That's it's a political stupid. move. Oh, you know what? I just realized something. That's like people who are like in A League going like, "Oh, let's compete in B League." That's so we exactly kick everybody's ass. That's yeah. exactly I what. I fucking happens. hate those people, and that's why every hockey game we had turned violent. <laughs> yeah. No, but I, I think I think it's going to be Dev Patel because I he's... forgot something, and you know, if oh, it's too bad I already made my choice because you might be right on Emma Stone on the last category for leading role because mm-hmm. she's not in one but two nominated films this year, yeah. 
and there's quite a few of these movies, uh, these actors who were in multiple nominated films this exactly. year. Exactly. And uh, Mahershala Ali, uh, I picked him for Moonlight because he's not in one, but two yes. films that are nominated figures this as well. Year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was going to go that way, but because of of the, the misuse of the submission guidelines. Mm-hmm. I think that it's going to be Dev Patel still. Yeah, I, I didn't know that going in, but I'm sticking with my choice. Yeah. And I hope you're right because he yeah. he was amazing in both yeah. movies. And I and I sh- I should have I should have made that choice. This one I was like I didn't know but who to choose. Now so. that I know that I think maybe Sam might be right on this one. Yeah, I think he will. And yeah, this one I just threw a dart at cuz I was yeah. <laughs> at this point I'm like I don't know who so I just put Jeff And Bridges. I don't know how they could make that the, that mistake on that one but maybe it was just like they they bumped them down because there were too many big names in, in the lead actor category well, but I, I I was reading an article of, about how, yeah about how yeah, that, that you can garbage. get submitted for a category right so Dev Patel was submitted for best supporting actor that's why he's in that category it wasn't the academy deciding it right it was the studio submitting on his behalf so they they like Tr said, is they took an A League performance and moved it into the B League because they figured he had a better shot there. Yeah, yeah. so he gets because to... I mean he's been nominated several times before, but he's oh, never won, sure. right? So mm-hmm. I think they want they're, they're trying to get him his award. Right. I just think it should it should be in leading actor, but I, and I think he could stand he could stand with those people that are in the actor in a leading role. Oh, I, I do certainly believe he can. I, I, I took, after that seeing that performance, absolutely he can. Quite frankly, I think putting him there is fucking insulting to him and everybody else. I agree. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, no, I went with Jeff Bridges on that, so that's cool. me. All right, so now we go on to actor in a leading role. Casey Affleck, Manchester by the Sea, Andrew Garfield, Hacksaw Ridge, Ryan Gosling, La La Land, Viggo Mortensen, Captain Fantastic, and Denzel Washington, Fences. Shit spackled Muppet fart! That is a crazy category. It yeah. is insane. Uh, you know, An embarrassment of riches. Andrew Gar- Garfield in not one but two nominated films this year. And uh, so good in Hacksaw Ridge. Yeah. He looks, yeah. I only saw, I still need to see that movie, but he looks amazing. Gosling's already got a gold globe for La La Land. I mean, yeah. Viggo Mortensen, I think he's he's got it coming so that's the other thing it's sort of it seems like an he's owed one he's i think he's owed one but it might not be this year i don't think so denzel's got a few of them and he's never misses a beat again honestly though i think it's going to be casey affleck this year me too yeah me too like i was even by the trailer i was impressed by his performance hard hard movie to watch and really i don't know why it was up for as many awards as it was but this one definitely deserved yeah. Um, and this brings me on to one of my soapboxes, if you guys don't mind. <laughs> no, okay, we, go, we, go ahead. For we rarely get to see you rant. It's oh, usually one of us. <laughs> rant number two. <laughs> yeah. Yes, and, and all, all around this, because one of the things that's come up with the nominations, both with Casey Affleck and Mel Gibson, is their past behavior. People saying they shouldn't be nominated because of their past behavior. Why are they up for these awards? Because of their past behavior. Because it's their fucking past behavior. That's not who they are today. That, well, it's not about who they are. It's yeah. about their talent. Period. It's about their talent. Stop bringing politics into award ceremonies when they're about talent. Yeah, you don't have to like the person to like the work. I've learned that lesson a long time ago. Meeting certain people and not liking the person they are. But I like the work. And, you know, say what you want about Mel Gibson. It's totally justified. He's quite a prick. But, you know, he makes good movies. Yeah. Yeah, but it depends. I don't know. It's... I'm of two minds on this. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can go I, the but, Polanski route where you do something terrible, yeah. but people are, oh, no, it's all about the talent. Or you can go with Donald Trump was a talented promoter. Take a drink. He, <laughs> thank you. It doesn't like he's and he's a garbage person. And look at that. Like how much talent can override like what level of crime can you commit that your talent can override that's the confusing part well like, I get, i'm talking about past behaviors that they have not exhibited since yeah well eh, i mean right? let's let's look at it this way gibson you got to put your mind I don't buy that. you got to put your mind in the mind of of the voter and i hate to say it but they they do play politics over at the oscars um, oh yeah, I don't think they're ready to give Mel Gibson anything yet. No, and that's oh, why no. I, have, um, I think everybody is completely forgotten 
about whatever Casey Affleck has done. I don't Mostly. even know what that is <laughs> anymore. I yeah. really don't. Yeah. I'm like, why are because we? Because stuff why gets stuff issue? gets forgotten all the time. That's yeah. just the way it is. And I um, think he, you know, out of the Afflecks, he's probably you know acting wise, he's definitely been in some great roles. And he, here's the thing: I, from what I understand of what has been done, I, I don't think he's Mel Gibson horrifying as a person. Mm. But Mel Gibson, like you say, it's past behavior. He's done some shit. But I do not, I truly do not believe there is no remorse for Mel Gibson. So say he's fucking talented as he wants. But if you exhibit no remorse, you can talk about it's past, it's in the past, it's past behavior. If you show no remorse for your past behavior, it's not fucking past behavior, it's present well, I, I'm guessing you didn't pick him for directing. <laughs> but we're, Fuck yeah. no. Let's but, not, like, that's the take... whole thing. I don't care. If you show remorse <laughs> for past behavior, that is fine. Yeah. Then I can call it past behavior. Yeah, but when you don't... He kind of ignores it. Yeah. He's he does not, kind of ignore it, but... Uh, he's remorseless uh, about it. But I just don't have it... Ble- I believe it has a place in the quality of his work, right? Yes, he yeah. may be a dick, and he may have some pretty reprehensible behaviors... And may still continue to exhibit them, but his work is still good, mm-hmm. right? If they fired every person who was a dick for being no. a dick, but here's the deal. yeah, no kidding, here's, especially in Hollywood. Yeah. But here's the problem that I have with it is because this is an award, but it's if, not a reward. It's not a humanitarian award. It's no. an award for making a fucking pretty picture. It's an award. It, here's the thing. It's an award. If you're getting lauded for something. That's fine. If you get paid for something, that's doing your fucking job. If he's doing a good fucking job, he's doing a good fucking job. But it's awards are, let's be honest, are fucking meaningless. You can still win employee of the month and still be a dick. Yes, yeah. you can. But... And that's basically what this is, right? Yeah. yeah I mean, but we are on best actor, yeah. not, well, <laughs> not. No, yeah. no, no, no but, Gibson's not even in the But this Casey category. Affleck was was one of the of the other um, yeah. so, uh, or so, so bots for a lot of for a lot of are overly sensitive. Sorry, what did nation. he do? Apparently he turned a blind eye to some, some he- sexual harassment occurring on the set of... Oh, um, no, he was like, part of the sexual harassment on the set. He settled t- out of court. Implicitly. He impl- it, 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 he was complicit, but he, he apparently didn't actually participate in it. No. He, but he did allow it to happen. He was aware of it and allowed it to continue well, to happen. Well, it doesn't even no, sound like... I've and, read and, stuff. And, and, he yeah. was definitely a part of it. Well, yeah. it sounds Regardless. like even the facts are kind of hazy on there, so yeah. I'm going to keep my, my judgment out of that because I don't even know what the fuck he did. But yeah. he looks great in this movie, so I picked yeah. I picked Casey Affleck for Manchester by the Sea. As did I. I think that his performance was excellent. Oh, I'm right? not and saying was, he's not going to yeah, win. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, I I, I I went based on performance and quality of work, yeah. so. Yeah, I didn't say he's not going to yeah. win. No. Well, what did you pick? I picked Casey Affleck. Like, okay, yeah. <laughs> after all that. I, yeah, yeah, after all well, no, no. I'm not, yeah, like, but what I'm saying is, yeah, I know you can be a dick and do your job, but here's the deal. If you get an award for doing this, you just continue being a fucking reprehensible piece of shit. He's not getting an award for being a dick. He's getting an award for the work he did. Yeah, but yeah. if you think you're above the law in any way, shape, or form, you're going to continue being a dick. You know it, I know it, everybody fucking knows it. Uh, I, I yeah. yeah. I I don't know enough about whatever K- Casey Affleck. Yeah, and is oh, I'm just talking in, in general yeah. in life. Yeah, and yeah. I yeah, I don't. Let's be honest. In life, yeah. people who think they're above everything. Yeah, will continue I, being I don't terrible. think Hollywood's ready for to give completely forgive milk. Gibson. It. They're they're going to recognize the talents, but they're I don't think they're going to give him anything. He'll no, get not he'll get lifetime few, achievement in like maybe a, a few a decade or so. Yeah. <laughs> like he's a hell of an actor, but. And a hell of a director, but he's got to do a lot more. Yeah, to make amends. Yes, I I completely agree. But I just think the uproar about his nomination was out of proportion to yeah, that. Is a slick looking movie. Yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, yeah, exactly. It was warranted based on the quality of work. That's the point yeah. I'm trying to make. Oh no, yeah. no, I'm I'm not saying Hacksaw Ridge isn't bad. Yeah. But I'm, what I'm saying is part of it. Like I, I understand why he didn't get best director. But here's the thing: he didn't get best director, but Hacksaw Hacksaw Ridge is getting. A lot of other nominations for it, mm-hmm. which which he had a hand in. Yeah, he's and, getting. And you've picked that movie for some of the smaller things, and exactly. I think it will get recognized for smaller things. Oh, for sure. And it's 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 not that Hacksaw Ridge will be ignored completely. I mean, it's recognized for just being on the list. Yes, yeah. and it made the short list. Yeah. yeah, it will be recognized. He just Mel Gibson himself won't be recognized, and yeah. that's the difference. Yeah. And speaking of for achievement in directing. Dennis Villeneuve for Arrival, and given given that guy's track record with Sicario and the upcoming mm-hmm. uh, of, Arrival was great. Sicario was great. I I, I think. 
Blade Runner is in good hands with this man. Yes. Although it's a movie I never wanted to see. But I'm still excited I, about it for some reason. I am so not. I don't give two shits about Blade Runner 2049 because my, my, my story ended. I'm fine with where it was. I don't need to change the ending that's in my head. Yeah, I'm afraid. I haven't even seen the trailer yet because I don't know what. Uh, yeah, it looks fine. It looks great. But I just, I don't, I, you know. Anytime you do a sequel to something that was a know, closed that, story, like, a closed least, story, yeah. and that long ago, and it's still enough where you can make your own interpretations. I, it suddenly whatever your interpretations may be wrong. Like, like I'm already disappointed. I watched the trailer. I don't want to see this movie. It was just I don't think it was necessary. But that's just me. But who knows? Blade Runner will probably make a billion dollars. Hacksaw Ridge, Mel Gibson. We've talked about it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> La La Land, Damien. Chazelle, who also wrote this film, and he was up for last year's Whiplash. Mm -hmm. Manchester by the Sea, Kenneth Lonergan. Lonergan. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, He wrote Gangs of New York and Moonlight by Barry Jenkins. Super Venus. There was nothing on this list that I I, I recognize. So he's kind of a first time, but he he wrote and directed this thing. Moonlight's pretty impressive. This is one of those years I think the the director and the film are going to get split. Mm-hmm. I think it's going to be Damien Chazelle for La La Land, mm-hmm. personally. Yeah, and I, I think you might be right. I didn't pick him, but I think you may be right because he yeah. did get passed over last year for Whiplash. Mm-hmm. Right? So you, typically, when you get nominated two years in a row, they kind of throw you a bone that second year quite frequently, right? And mm-hmm. I think that may be what's Ooh, happening here. Okay, yeah, I didn't think about that. And I didn't either until Jay was talking about the fact that he was nominated for Whiplash. I'm like, oh shit, yeah. Yeah, um, that's not how I split mine. Yeah. I did think it's going to be a split. The best picture and the director are going to be two different movies. Okay, well, what, what's your choice of best I, director? I had Manchester by the Sea for a director. Okay. As did I. And I didn't split it. I went with it for something else, too, so... Okay, so we got we got two for Kenneth Loner again. So and given Gangs of New York, it's a great choice. You know, we'll, yeah. we'll wait and see. Um, May happen. All right, this is the big one. This is the big one. <laughs> Da-da-da. Up for Best Picture, Arrival. We'll do it for this one. <laughs> Fences. Hacksaw Ridge. Hell or High Water. <sighs> Hidden Figures. <laughs> La La Land. <laughs> Lion. <laughs> <laughs> Manchester by the Sea. <laughs> and Moonlight. Oh. Oh. Motherfucker! Let's ah! Yeah, ah! yeah, yeah. Ah! I don't know. All right. Ah! Hey, ah! hey. Oh, yeah. See, oh, this was probably not a good idea to do that one because there's a lot of movies here. <laughs> I only realized that halfway through. <laughs> Everybody turned us off. I am yeah. so sorry. <laughs> I take full responsibility for what happened there. I apologize profusely to everybody. <laughs> we don't. That was fun. <laughs> well, I mean... Well, I'm apologizing to you guys. I thought you guys were losing your voices oh. or something like that. <laughs> no. no, we're just trying to keep, keep it creative. Oh, like, okay. I was like, oh my God, I'm killing them. Up. Mixing it up. <laughs> I think basic rules. I mean, it's really rare when the best picture isn't somebody who's nominated for director, unless you're Ben Affleck. Um, yeah, or, you know, poor Ben. Ar- Argo, he didn't get a nomination for Argo, but the Argo won best picture. It's really rare. That's really rare. So I was able to chop that list down to five right off the bat. I kind of went with that basic rule. But as I said, I think director and film are going to get split. So I went with Moonlight for best picture. Yes, I. I, As I said, the Boyhood didn't win, and they did Boyhood in less time. (laughs) True, (laughs) and it's well done. It is well done. It is very well. I I mean, it doesn't just deal with a child growing up. It deals with issues of sexuality, and it's just so so good. Yeah, Um, I will be honest. When I first the first trouble the the first act. Um, with the little, the little act, I'm like, oh, I don't know, I don't know where this is going, but it gets, it engages you it by the goes by amazing. act two when you get into to Chiron. It, it's mm-hmm. it's so engaging. I didn't go with that. I did go with Manchester by the Sea again because it's exactly the kind of thing the Academy loves voting for. It yeah. is exactly the kind of thing they love voting for. It's not the one I wanted to see win though. I, again, Lion was still 
by far yeah. the best picture. But again, Jay's absolutely right. That very rarely do you see something on the best p- picture list when you don't see the best director. Mm-hmm. See, yeah. Now, I the, mean, they could surprise me. But. True. And the one I wanted to win, I, I don't know if it will, is Moonlight. But I'm going out of the gate with, um, I think it's going to force Gumpet, uh, La La Land. Oh, <laughs> Okay, <laughs> you, we've seen did, this. We've won, seen this happen before. Yeah, it won. I mean, Moonlight won the Golden Globe for Best Dramatic Feature, and uh, Musical Comedy went to La La Land. But these um, are compressed in this one. Yeah, yeah. And like I said, the the Academy doesn't always do what the Golden Globes does. So tough call. I mean, it is yeah. a tough, tough call. I think the crowd pleaser right now, and the the odds on favorite is La La Land. Yeah, like I just I think it's going to be one of those ones where people are like, we have to vote it in. It's the it's the lightest one of all the movies. Like I mm. think they're like, oh, we've been voting for depressing. Let's just give the people like a Forrest Gump feeling. I just feel that's what's going to happen. Interesting. Yeah, who knows? Maybe, maybe, maybe. And we can find out in just a few days. Coming up on February twenty sixth is the Oscars. We'll be watching. Yeah. We'll be scoring it and see who gets that coveted KFC coupon. Woohoo! <laughs> our own version of the Oscar. Exactly. I don't know. Maybe I'll try to guess uh, our, our own statuette or something and we can pass I, it around every yeah. year. Yeah. Well, I, I, the, I, the KFC coupon is fine because, I mean, I find that more useful than a, an Oscar statue. <laughs> I just want an Oscar statuette. <laughs> yes. And the way my career is going, I'm never going to get nominated or anything. Just you make know. it with foil. <laughs> we'll just make our own little foil. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, we'll... we'll ooh, ooh, we make it like a little statuette, but like with our little flying saucers. An invasion of the remake on it. There, there you go. There maybe, we go. Well, maybe we'll do, down the road, we'll do the Invasion Awards. Ah, oh, yeah. That, that's down the good. road. Yeah. Good idea. For most disappointing remake. Oh, fuck. Isn't that so much? Hey, in remake news, by the way, this one gets my goat a little bit. Rings has done so well that it got a movie pushed. The World War Z movie has been pushed in in the schedule. And Friday 13th remake has been canceled entirely. So (laughs) the excuse is because the Rings did so badly. That's bullshit, by the way. Anybody Mm -hmm. who says otherwise, it's bullshit there's been a regime change over there at paramount that isn't favorable to horror movies it's nope. that simple they already they moved rings three times they they, they already knew they that movie fucked was, it. they knew that movie was dog shit from the get-go so anything if yeah. they're using that as a barometer to move their horror shtick around uh, or cancel it out entirely they're just using rings as an excuse because rings was already dog shit yeah it's one it's one of those sh- it's one of those shell games where the blame gets put on something that has nothing to do with anything else. Yeah. It's like, oh, pay attention to this thing, even though we're fucking up over here. Yep. Yeah. So that was in the news this week, and uh, I just want to mention it because it pissed me off the way that was reported. And it's bullshit. You dump this horror movie in the dog shit weeks of January and early February, and you, you knew you had shit. You and the promotion it was, on it was trash. Yeah. Everything about what this release or surrounding it was just trashed. Yeah. They didn't give a shit. They did not give a shit. And no. I don't know. I mean, I'd rather see Friday the 13th get canceled uh, and come up with a, a, a decent one. product, a decent script, rather than just rehashing and rehashing like they have been. You know, that last Platinum Dunes ones was just so god-awful, so... You know, yeah. maybe save him. I, I'd actually like to see them move back into the original continuity and maybe do another monster oh, meets monster kind of movie like they did. Like with the new Freddy. Halloween movie? They are stepping in right after Halloween 2 yeah. and basically turfing everything that happened after Halloween 2. Yes, yeah. yeah um, Wes Craven is coming back in. Or not Wes Craven. I'm sorry. He's gone. Yeah. Uh, John Carpenter. John Carpenter. Yeah. Um, he's not directing. He's just involved in the creative aspect of it. Oh, I thought he was directing. No, apparently not. I, I just read this week that, it, that there's a, a new director attached to it. Okay. And it's, it's, start, it's starting up immediately after the events of the second movie. Okay. But so like this Halloween 3 will be like an actual 3, not like the Halloween 3 was in the Halloween 3. So are they going to recast uh, Laurie Strode? I have no idea. Like I said, I just read that, it, that it's going to oh, pick up. I guess up. we're real yeah. too early for casting or whatever. Yeah, but it's, it's going to pick up after the second movie in the original Really? S- yeah. Series, so. Not like huh. what happened the first time. Interesting. Yeah. So so we, I think the idea is to give us a true Halloween 3. Um, right, right. Yeah. So. Oh yeah, just to fill in that void. 
But I guess you have to recast. You can't. Yeah. Jamie Lee Curtis isn't exactly as good as they 20 are years with, old yeah. anymore. Yeah, as good as they were with the, with the, the Carrie Fisher in in Rogue One, it's it still, it's still you could, and you could not pull off a whole film that way. There's no re, no, no oh, freaking no. way. It's so jarring to yeah. me, at and least to me. Yeah. It's it's the, it would be the most frightening aspect of that horror movie. There's yeah. something really you terrifying can, you, about yeah, that. You can't have a CGI actress in there to, and not have her look scarier than Michael Myers. You <laughs> don't want that to happen. No. I don't. know. We'd be sitting there going like, "Oh my God, Michael, run!" Run, Michael. <laughs> Why is it like humans look fake, but animals look real? Like when I'm watching The Jungle Book and they're talking and I had no problem with it. They all looked so legit. <laughs> Maybe I don't, it's a, an, a, a reverse anthropomorphizing. Uh, it's interesting. Like we're willing to put human aspects on animals, but when something is less human. It, it freaks us out. Yeah. There's still, there's, there's still this plasticky look to them. Um, even, like I mean, as as good as it was in Rogue One, like like it was pretty darn good. It's decent. Um, all things considered. But I was watching um a cutscene from a video game that's coming out on Tuesday, and I was freaking amazed by everything except for the people. Right. I mean, the grass, the water, the clothing, all looked real. And then as soon as you see a face or a hand, you're like, oh, you just took me out of it. Is that Horizon? Yeah. No, it's called For Honor. Oh, okay. Well, isn't there oh, yeah, isn't honor. there something? There's a whole psychological term for the idea where humans get unsettled by things that seem to be human but aren't human. Mm-hmm. That they get very there's a fear there, and there's like a, an unsettledness to it. Because I mean, you've seen some of these robots where they've made them more intelligent, like more interactive. More they're trying to make them so humanoid, but they're very unsettling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's true. I mean, I don't personally find it unsettling, but I recognize it when it's like I can recognize it as not real. There's there's no humanness behind it. I don't. I, I wouldn't say it's fun and selling. I was not as bothered by Tarkin or Princess Leia in Rogue One as an example. It didn't bother me at all. See Tark, I, and I thought I thought maybe, they, they looked like video game cutscenes to me. Maybe it's aging something because Tarkin I found easier to watch than than Leia. There's something about smoothing everything out that makes it look more unnatural than it does to add more. Yeah, I like mean wrinkles and yeah. stuff. Tarkin was less noticeable than Leia. Like, I think mm-hmm. you're right. There's a certain deadness there, but it was impressive enough that it didn't bother me. Yeah, maybe that's it. You can't... Yeah, trying to make somebody younger is unsettling, but making them older maybe easier? I don't know. I, they were both unsettling to me, so <laughs> they, they both bugged me. Um, so what do you guys think about Jimmy Kim- Kimmel hosting the Oscars this year? I have no opinion. I like Jimmy Kimmel. Yeah, me too. Um, so, I, like, I mean... I want to see a I think Matt Damon bit. Yeah, yeah, I think he'll be non-controversial enough that it will be. Oh, it'll be fine. Oh, trust me. There's going to be a lot enough pissed off celebrities and documentarians, that which is yeah, will will carry that burden for him. For what's happening in the past year, he's the best choice. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Because he do, he does tend to stay timely, but tries not to ruffle anybody's feathers. He's yeah. very good at that. Except for Matt Damon. He loves mm-hmm. messing with Matt Damon, but I think that's but another they, dynamic. They both, they're both in on uh, it. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely an in-joke. Although, right? given, given that nobody saw that election coming, uh, next year, give me give me the host, Stephen Colbert. Oh, or that, Bill Maher. Or Bill Maher. Oh my fucking God, would that be amazeballs. <laughs> <laughs> that would be good. Or John, I just want bring John Stewart in. John Stewart would. Kill yeah, it's it. not like he's got anything to do right now. <laughs> he would. He would he, nail he quit, the shit he quit out of too that thing. Early. Yeah. <laughs> he I think would. We, yeah, pay pay him what he wants. Pay him anything he wants. Bring him out of retirement. Just get him there. That's all I that want. That would be good. I like that. No, he's <laughs> just, not retired anymore. He's got seven projects. A seven deal. Seven project deal with Netflix. Oh, nice. does he? Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. Cool. Well, then, okay, then Netflix, don't give him so many because we need him freed up <laughs> for the Oscars. Yeah. That is what I want. Yeah, yeah no, he, he, he's retired from... Being to, in front of things. Well, no, he's, yeah, mostly, yeah. I think he's producing, more producing, but he's still going yeah. to be appearing and stuff. But yeah, I think he just wants to be off that daily grind. He wants to be able to do things on his own terms. Well, and I think, yeah, he schedules. wants to be with his family. Yeah. And, yeah. and his bee farm. Yeah. Is it a bee farm? I think so. Yeah, he's done some, some sort of, of, of environmental farm thing for the last few years. Since yeah, he left, and yeah. he's been like really active on um, like for animal rights and yeah. veganism. Right. right. Yeah, John Stewart next year. Yes, I agree. There you go. Well, that was our Oscar special, but we're not done yet because we want to know what our fellow invaders think as well. You can. 
give us your picks out of the nominees lists. Uh, we can do all the categories, some of the categories, whatever. It's going to be really tough on Twitter, but you can do that on Twitter, yeah. at Invasion Remake. You can Facebook us. We have a Facebook page you can like. Like us there. And it's Invasion of the Remake, of course, on Facebook. You can give us your two cents there. And uh, you can also email us, Invasion of the Remake at gmail.com. Maybe yes. we can throw a link to the ballot on our Facebook page. Yes. And then people can email sure. their result their their choices to us. Yeah. yeah. We and can print we out can, the ballot. Yeah, yeah, and whoever if you do that and uh you kick our asses, we'll we'll let everybody know how you did on the air. <laughs> and we <laughs> we'll don't have any swag to share to give away. Oh, yeah. We're like talking that, but, about it though. But we'll talk yeah. about it. We'll give you some bragging rights. Hey, you get bragging yeah. rights for now. Yeah. <laughs> maybe next year we'll be able to have some prizes for you. And if you're if you're like really really good, we'll maybe we'll help you with your psychic hotline because obviously you know something that we don't. <laughs> yeah, and who knows? There might be a KFC coupon in your future. <laughs> <laughs> might be. We're gonna spoil them, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> and it's only good in participating KFCs here in Calgary, but. <laughs> yeah, only to the end of March. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, if you're a local follower, um, you're still shit out of luck. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you win the KFC coupon, you might just still be full of shit. Uh, exactly. <laughs> or completely without <laughs> shit. I know, just I spewing know. every five minutes. I don't know. Well, and K- there we go, getting back back to normal, off color. K- KFC is how you can like you know just eat your shame. That's just how it goes. <laughs> if you like this show, I mean, you're obviously listening to us, but tell your friends, tell your families how to find us. We are on Libsyn, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play Music, TuneIn Radio, Player FM, Audio Boom, and YouTube. Let everybody know where we are. Uh, you, you also could support the show. We're not a part of a big conglomerate that are getting mm-hmm. into podcasting and trying to take over. We're not one of these big guys. We don't have celebrities on this show driving our numbers. So you can help us out and get more earballs on the show by giving us a five-star rating on iTunes or four, whatever, how many stars you have to give, as long as they're not fucks. Just Give us some stars. <laughs> give us some stars to give. There are no fucks to give on iTunes. And you can also leave us a short review. Yeah. The more reviews, the more ratings we have, the higher we rise up on the charts, and the more earballs that yeah. are on the show. The more the the more available the show becomes, the more it's much easier for the people and to find us. If we have like more reviews, we can do that kind of pick and choose things they do on posters. Exhilarating four stars, <laughs> intense five stars. Yeah, and you know, and if um, I might start setting some goals, if we start seeing more ratings and stuff, maybe when we hit like every milestone, like a hundred reviews, maybe we'll do a bonus episode. Ooh, nice! You know, and and we might let them vote on what that is. We'll we'll pick four or five topics cool. and then put that in a poll on Twitter and uh, but you got to get us to that first goal so um, let's let's make the first goal a hundred comments and then we'll put up a, a poll Woo-hoo. on what the next episode and and the invaders can decide what that episode is nice yes. that bonus episode and it will be it won't be just it'll be like two episodes that week it'll be amazing yeah so but that's that's you guys you have control over that so. Get on the get on there. Start rating and reviewing, and maybe you'll get yeah. that bonus episode. Exactly. You help drive this narrative. That's this is interactive. This isn't like just sitting and watching a movie. You that's can help right. drive this. That's right. Well, that's it. That's been us at the Oscars. I'm gonna go out and get out of this tuxedo. I don't know why I put on a tuxedo for 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 a podcast. Yeah, but I like looking snazzy. I'm smelling nice. Exactly. And I mean, but at that red carpet outside, you've got to do something about it. It's just covered in goop. Well, you know, it got to the snow and all the snow and then it started melting and everything. It's just, yeah, I, it was, it, I didn't think that one through. It's like a brown carpet. If I was smart enough, I would have just like put the, some red dye on the snow. Oh, that would have worked. Man. It was the flashes from the photographers that were getting to me. Yeah. I don't know how they found us. I don't, <laughs> I don't know if they're photographers. I think they're just stalkers. Uh, you have stalkers? I, I, well, I don't know why why they said show show us your tits because I thought that was really weird but, and very rude and very rude. Yeah, it was just like no, it's it's unbecoming of an Oscar ceremony. But maybe they thought it was something else. How dare they? How dare they? Well, with that, I've been Jason. I'm Sam. <laughs> I'm Trish. Happy Oscars. <laughs> Thank you.
You're still here. It's over. Go home. Oh, and don't leave your garbage all lying around. It's a total dick move.